being the last bastion of hope for the good citizens who looked to the cowboy, looked to the sheriff as the guy who would give up his life for them. Well, all right, I'm going to stop that there. The whole, uh, the whole interview is up on my Facebook, Free American 6-9. And Jake, I, I, I just thought that was appropriate because uh, what we're talking about is morals. What we were talking about uh, later on in that interview, they even say, you know, we, we barred God from schools. And they talk about the, uh, the takeover of our public fool system. I'm sorry, public school system. <laughs> and... Uh, I believe that is one of the reasons you started the Little Red Schoolhouse and the uh, and the uh, Timothy Bible College, isn't it? That is correct. Um, I am glad that the way they started that out was the woman that was uh, doing that started that out the way that many do nowadays, and it is the and the. Though she is right for what she said, uh, he's put that up because it's the vernacular, it's the syntax, it's the vocabulary that we up. And, you know, just like uh, attacking people that are saying there's a conspiracy going on or saying you're a conspiracy theorist, there are conspiracies. There always have been. They're, they're from the folk. Thing. Uh, I like what this guy said because our, our worldwide facade was that Western. I, I can tell you this I brought a woman down here from Canada and she was just over the border, but she came to visit and uh, he brought her mother. And when we picked her mother up on the airplane, the aunt was in Canada. Oh no, well, you know, I, I'm, I'm not too sure I want to do this because y'all are going out there where the Indians are fighting the cowboy boys all that. <laughs> In Canada. Well, not, and uh, the, the world does pretty much uh, based our past and our early facade on that. And it's a shame that that isn't really the truth anymore in who we are and in the moral case be high it wasn't in the great influence quickly put in in the higher education branch to, uh, and he used a very important term there it's not the Democrat and Republic in the same breath and call it constitution the uh, party is for demonstration based thing not real cool. and you know, literally because that voice might hurt to some degree and there is a huge difference and you know this as a political science uh, man that you it has to be defined, defined properly or we miss the whole thing and that's where we have ended up that we've been so and you mentioned the, the system out there the the what do they call it the public conduct public fool system yes sir like uh, volatile not school <laughs> it's information uh, they have guns and badges and now barbed wire it looks more like a prison than the prison do anymore and the the indoctrination of our uh, people has been so multi-generational it's not just this generation it's that one that is teaching it's that one that's the purity of our current generation if some person is told to homeschool their child because it's better they don't know how they haven't got food because they've been produced by the same guided, guided probably by the other, other people. A PLD right from and that is, is entitlement, or we've got you because we're giving you tech care. Well, if, if you've been educated in this, uh, 
public fool system, uh, Jake. You've gone to college, and your uh, your education has been indoctrinated. And so you're, you've really been indoctrinated. We don't know. I've said the way I put it, that they have refined the art of slavery to the point that the slaves don't know they're slaves. And, and uh, so suddenly we're, we're trying to homeschool, and we don't have the education to be able to really accomplish that. And we're also being programmed by television, aren't we? I said they, don't, they don't call it programming for nothing. I'm losing you. Uh, Hello? Yeah, let me, uh, let me try this. Let me try this. Let me try bringing you up uh, on a different computer. I, I've got four people on Skype here four stations on Skype. It, uh, let me try to bring you up on a separate uh, a separate thing here. Let me call you right back. Can we do that? My, my head is. Can I? Let me call you right back, Jake. Let me try to get you. Uh, you're, I'm losing you, too. I'll call you right back. Uh, incredible here, incredible here, trying to get this working, trying to get everything working, it's been a real bitch today. Yeah, let's try, I'll try it again this way. I, I tried to shift computers that wouldn't let me call you on the other computer. Kept dropping the call. Maybe by bringing you back up again, uh, the uh, this will clear up. Can you hear me all right? Yes, sir. Uh, can I have four minutes? Absolutely. All right. What I would like to do is, is quickly, in four minutes, present what I'm going to do Friday night and Sunday afternoon because... Uh, it's right what you're talking about, right what we're discussing. Uh, we don't learn from history. We have uh, in the Old Testament, in Deuteronomy chapter 1, beginning at 24, it says, God says, I gave you this trip. I have freed you. I have been with you. I won your battles for you. Go get Erica, Raven. I don't care if they're giants. I don't care if there's uh, it seems impassable, I'm going to fix it. And he did. But the people who he told that to initially never got to go because they were afraid. And they, in, in that fear, they sat and complained and they murmured and they blamed each other and they wouldn't get together and they had to do it their way and they died in the desert. And, and it happens over and over again. And that when the people were exiled to Babylon and you even wrote a book uh, of that title it is the same recurring theme in the book of Jude in the New Testament Jude reminds we've got Christ came and he made this so physically evident he's got the victory he says here's how you do it and, and still you're murmuring still you're complaining Still, it seems you'd rather die in the desert than to get a victory. And that's where we are. I've got seven things that we need to do. And this is straight from the Bible. I'm going to put it in Texas. Wake up, answer his call. Here's the part they don't do with you and I most of the time. Listen, be patient, and here's a huge one. Fear not. God says fear only me. And then we've got to act 
and we have to act in unity and then do it his way. It was what not to do. No fear. We cannot fear what man can do, how big they are, what is you're not whether there's a new world order because there always has been we can do a history on that real easy doubt Satan does doubt so that we are ignoring God which is number three and when we, then we allow egos to puff up our own pride and then we murmur and we complain and we backbite and we argue and we get angry and we mind other people's business and got to do it my way but we're doing it our way and we end up with all of it by saying okay by the christians we need to be under the blood of texas and if you will a true flag of texas as a christian patriot we need to come together in unity psalm 133 says if you come together in unity i'll bless you science i mean satan is is laughing he doesn't have to do anything. We're fighting each other. How, why would he have to fire a shot? That's where we are. And and if we don't come together in unity, it doesn't make a difference what the program is. We're going to fail anyway. So, Second Thessalonians 3, Paul said, Y'all quit backbiting, quit minding everybody else's business, come together in unity, and basically shut up. So, you know, if we took a few leaders and everybody put their petty differences aside. I, I hear people saying, well, Clay Douglas, uh, you know, he's, he's awful pushy and he's loud and he's in your face. And okay, well, somebody's got to be. <laughs> I'll tell whoever would put that on you that. And I would tell them this be careful of the vernacular. The Zionists are not our friends, they're pushing an agenda which is not godly. The, the new world order is not godly. It is the wrong agenda. The people who blow up buildings in this country and shoot kids to try to get their agenda through are certainly not Americans, and they are not Christians. We don't do things that way. That's right. It wasn't the, uh, it wasn't the militia that uh, killed the children in Waco. It wasn't the militia that killed the children in Oklahoma City. That was all done by government agencies posing as the good guys, the BATF, and that's why I started the Free American on this radio show, because the media, controlled by Zionists, were covering that, were, were excusing, trying to excuse that same thing happened in, uh, in uh, the Bundy Ranch in Nevada there. They, uh, Harry Reid was accusing the ranchers and the people that supported and the militia among them they were supporting the Bundy, Cleveland Bundy and they, they were accusing them of being domestic terrorists but see you keep bringing in like Harry Reid and, and whoever that uh, lady, we, I guess you could call her lady was, it was ATF back then and the Attorney General General These Reno. People haven't gone up since to pull pee out of a bank by themselves. Now, Jake, I, I, I've got to take this up because of just what you said here. Uh, this is, uh, to me, this is the way God works. Yeah, I've got a, a piece that I wrote. It's basically the uh, publisher's corner for the May issue of the magazine. And, uh, I'm going to pull a paragraph out of here. I said almost all of our programming is based on creative fiction. I grew up watching television cowboys fight Indians, thus justifying the senseless and needless slaughter of millions of indigenous Americans. Their warriors did fight for their homeland against the English, the Spanish, and French invaders. We owe a debt of gratitude to tribes like the Iroquois for whom our Constitution was modeled on their confederation of tribes. You know, it, is only, it is only in recent years that our historians and anthropologists have discovered the levels of advanced civilization that existed in the Americas, both north and south, before our arrival. Amen. <laughs> 
tell them about my people now. I am part Cherokee, which is is from the Iroquois branch, and we did have government. And if we had not taught the settlers how to fight, England would have won. That's right. The uh, counting coup, you know, the Indians, uh, the Indians, uh, and and now they're discovering right up uh, up there in Illinois, which has been taken over by uh, criminal element, uh, uh, Indiana and Illinois. There, there was a civilization of Indians that uh, was pretty incredible. They're just finding uh, that and. Uh, and uh, restoring it and the Mayans and the Aztec Central and South America they had an incredible civilization that we can't duplicate today we can't build a pyramid today <laughs> we haven't caught up with them yet no <laughs> <laughs> now you ought to be on the phone with, you ought to be on this thing with my wife right now because she is she would give you a about the times and the effort that Hollywood makes to get out stories and movies that are based on fact and they put them out the way they're interesting but um, they get it right where we know our public system certainly is today's but uh, sometimes it's better to watch the movies that Hollywood makes and, and get more out of that than you do what they're putting in some of the books or trying to shove down our kids through it. Yeah, occasionally a little bit of truth seeps in in Hollywood, but uh, again, this is uh, this element, and uh, you know, I, I I even hesitate to use the term Jew because they've really uh, they've really subverted that. The Khazarians, the Ashkenazi Jews, which make up about ninety percent of the Jewish population today. Their own scientists, their own tests have determined that uh, those people were never in Palestine. They didn't come from there. They came from the uh, Black Sea region of, uh, of Russia, which I think uh, is now called the Ukraine and Crimea, and, uh, and the whole thing's happening all over again, isn't it? Yeah. And... and I'm glad you did the the uh, the key thing with the Jew because Jew is short for Judah. Uh, it is really Zionist, and there is a great deal of difference. We are technically now Jews ourselves because we're New Israel. If you're, under, if you're under Jesus, He brought the message to the Jews first for Judah, and then in this. A uh, very unfortunate translation in the Kings, which called, which said, Jesus called the Pharisees Jews when he really wasn't saying, You're Jews. He's saying you're acting like you're Jews and you're claiming to be Jews because you're saying you're father of Abraham. Well, yes. let me, let me, you, you are the biblical scholar. You know, I, I am. Uh, probably the most impressive uh, person I've ever met on uh, uh, studying the Bible. How about John 8? What, who was uh, just exactly who was uh, Jesus talking to? First of all, I've got it on the cover of my book, Mystery Babylon. He said, Beware of the Jews who say they're Jews, but are not, or of the synagogue of Satan. Well, yeah. The translation is weird because you are claiming to be of Judah when you're of Israel. And they never had God looking and still in, in the time of Jesus and the first the southern kingdom was Judah that never got inside the walls of Jerusalem at the time for Jesus' ministry, but he was ministering to the Gentile after he talked to the Jews or Judah. Then he went into the city and got killed. And that's the way all that came about. And the Zionists are just like a lot of people in this new world order. They're trying to 
to push the envelope of prophecy by making things happen and claim the end in here. Well, it's, it's not the case. It's, you know, it's going to happen that when God decides to have it happen, when man pushes the envelope, and that's what the Zionists are doing in the New World Order, and folks like this, uh, we not let them, if you get this, through our own terrorists, which are the leading, produce so much fear and doubt, we band together and fight. Well, that's exactly what they do. Fear. They want you to be afraid. They, everything they do is to try to make you afraid. I mean, even uh, Alex Jones, who Randall Mock promotes every every uh, bulletin he puts out, he uh, every email he puts out, never says anything about this show. But uh, every email he puts out is, is Alex Jones, and Alex Jones wants you to be afraid. He wants you to be afraid. He's that's what he's there for. And that's why he makes the big bucks. He wants you to be afraid, and I don't think we need to be afraid. They're not as powerful, and they showed that. They showed that at, at uh, in uh, up in Nevada, the Bundy Ranch. They had remember they had snipers out there. They had snipers out there to uh, take them out to in case uh, uh, they were needed. And our guys, the militia, went up and disarmed these snipers and replaced them with themselves. So we had the advantage over there. You're not going to get that on the nightly news, but that's what happened because I've talked to the people that were there. And this uh, interview with Jim Garrow just, just talked about that. Can I throw two facts into this? Yes, sir. One of them is that and you brought this out, and so did your, your guy that you you played the recording of. Um, the sheriff, and, and this was back to what is, the proper local government that there is, and he has the right by constitution to run the federal government, the ATF, the CIA, the FBI, whatever, off if they are getting in his way locally, if they are attacking the people locally. He has that right by constitution, uh, and that you're absolutely right about. The problem I have with Waco is the guy didn't do there. He should have run the her bunch off and said, oh, we'll handle this here and we'll, you know, investigate. We're not going to bring in tanks and, and throw fire at these people because they're, they're, you know, in their own little compound. Also, let me point out this, that, and here's good news. I've been listening to Alex when I've gone towards Austin and can pick it up, and lately he's getting with the program big time he's mentioning bible he's talking about god he's uh, gotten away from the fear so he's bringing hope so yeah, it's, i'm not going to promote race limbaugh but i'm what he's seeing is more on the christian patriot side now than it is on the new world or whether he's a sheep and wolf clothing i don't care he's singing the high tune that's uh, encouraging to know. Huh? That's encouraging to know. But and here's what I'm here's the thing I'm trying to promote is that if we could see these guys as even I mean you you can take Karl Marx in and say oh, I don't like his politics and his background, but he's singing our song and say I'm going to watch him. I'm not trust. Him. I think that's what we as Christian patriots are going to have to do. Uh, whether people don't like what you're singing or not, put that aside, folks. He's still talking Christian patriotism. That's what the song ought to be. What about uh, John 8? He talks about the children of the devil. Your father is a liar and all that. What, uh, you got that, uh, that handy, that verse? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I can tell you exactly what that is. Again, he's talking to a group of Pharisees, the religious leadership of the time, who were dead, dead set on, and he loved this. They wanted to vilify him. They wanted to discredit him because he wasn't 
politically correct. And so they keep hitting him with, well, what about if somebody dies and, you know, what's the white going to do? And, and what about, you know, we're, we're waiting on Elijah to come and he hadn't come. And all the, they just kept coming at him. And he finally said to him, listen, if you were of Abraham, you would know who I was and you would honor me because I and my father are the same. God the Father, the Creator, given me. I am Him. I came in human form to set all this right. Well, they didn't want that because He's tipping over their apple cart. He stopped it off. Remember what He did going into Jerusalem early on. The first one of the first things He did was go into the temple and throw the bankers out because that's what they were. The Pharisees were bankers, and people don't want to look at that, but they they weren't as much religious leadership as they were political leadership and they were banking and they were exchanging merchandise and and uh, money exchange and and <clears throat> getting a profit on all that and jesus said you're making my place which should be the house to prayer in the in at least talking right to the people who are running the religious faction in israel and he's saying, you guys are nothing but a bunch of charlatans. Matthew 23, he's really beat them up. He said, you act like a, a bunch of leaders of the, you know, Christian leaders or godly leaders, but you're empty inside. You're full of dead men's bone. You're, you're picking on a little cut and you're out there pounding in the chest because you gave a little bit and did it publicly so everybody thinks you're holy. They were, what we're faced with right now in our country is all of the I'm going to get letters or you're going to get comments but the majority I don't know where the percentage is you ask our group and they'd say it's 99.5% but most of the pastors are not called of God and they are professionalists they are politically correct they don't do the 501c3 corporation as I have, they have given it to the lawyer and are beholding to the state. And I don't think the state's our enemy, but we have allowed control of it by the Satanist. We have, and you, you can go back there if you want to throw them in the same basket. Going back to John 8, he is telling us who these Pharisees are. They are the New World Order. They are of the synagogue of Satan, and they are not spiritually sons of Abraham. And that's what he's saying. You may have the blood in your veins, but spiritually, you're of the other guy. I, I'm sorry, I, I just heard a, a, a song by Don Henley playing through my head. <laughs> we have met the enemy, and he is us. Amen. Amen. We're our own worst enemies because we would rather fight each other and mumble and complain than to say we have a unity with this country. We are and we believe in country. Okay. Just got my uh, rent bill, electric bill, so. Sorry for the interruption. You know. I, say, I, I just said in my publisher's column for this month, and this month is really an important issue, Jake, because we really, there are answers to all of the problems that we've got. I, I, they've been just flowing across my desk. They're running Navy ships now. Stop it, Bandit. They're running Navy ships on the water they're floating on, don't need oil. They've, they've uh, developed the uh, ability to separate the hydrogen from the water. So our ships out there are floating on all the fuel they need to get from coast to coast. From uh, the, uh, I, And I, I said in my column here that there's a story that needs to be told here. I'm unsure of my ability to tell it. It is the general consensus that we have a problem with our government and most of us can agree that the too big to fail bankers are at the root of it all with the corporations they fund. Founding Father Thomas Jefferson told us that if you ever allow a private bank to issue your money, 
The banks and the corporations that spring up around them will leave your children homeless in the land we conquered. <laughs> and uh, I should say that because it's happened over and over again in history. You, you're the history guy. Yep. It's a repeating theme. That's right. And I said they have a sweet racket backing both sides of every conflict. But when we Amen. try to investigate closer and try to isolate and solve the problem, Due to a lifetime of lies and programming, we break down and begin fighting and arguing with each other. If we point out the bankers are predominantly Jewish, Jewish hit teams, Zionist hit teams, come after us screaming anti-Semite, and their presses roll out tons of propaganda demonizing activists. The press and mainstream media, again, predominantly controlled by Zionist Jewish interests always applied to spend to the militia and make them the bad guys in the Steven Seagal movies. The Palestinians and Arabs are always the terrorists and today the range of bad guys has been expanded to include veterans, preppers, and constitutionalists. Now I just had uh, I just had a uh, guy on my show Chris Blystone, the Texas coordination coordinator for uh, Operation American Spring. He's Jewish, right? Yes! <laughs> yes, it was a remarkable show. We had more than a few things in common. He rides a Harley. He's a Texan. He's a Christian veteran. Our families come from Germany. It was there our views diverted. His family were German Jews, and they believed the story of the Holocaust and lost members of their tribe to the Nazis. His view of Hitler is different than mine, but if I... As I have said on the air over and over again, I don't care who your grandmother slept with. <laughs> what well, matters? Let me point out something else, Mr. Historian. <laughs> more more uh, uh, German Christians were killed than Jews. Yes, sir. Well, I, I've well, said, I've said did, 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 I, I, I believe, Jake, now you can correct me if I'm wrong, I think there are still some descendants of the original tribes of Israel, the Israelites. They're still there in uh, Palestine, and, and today they just, uh, they're demonized by calling them Palestinians. <laughs> And well, and, and you got if you listen to the Mormon Church, and I don't think they'll throw them out with the bathwater. They believe the American Indian is a tribe of of uh, Judah, and that it came over here and settled and followed with the Christian uh, technique or whatever you want to call it, and it became what was the foundation you earlier alluded to about the Iroquois or the Cherokee culture. The, uh, how, how did I, uh, again, that's, uh, got that in this, uh, story that, uh, you know, the, the, the television was used to demonize the Indians, and we, we are to be really, and, and my whole Liberty Village concept is based on an Indian village, the Indian culture, yeah. we grew our own food, the Indians taught the pilgrims how to farm, how to, how to, uh, Grow their food, and uh, we. The, we oh, wait, 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 Clay! You can't do that. You're talking about getting away from uh, a city dwelling oppression, uh, road rage, uh, having to pay enormous taxes for and get nothing for them, and be self-sufficient, not be holding government. Uh, that, that's not going to work. That's exactly what I believe, and I believe that's exactly why they tried to kill me back in 2004, Jake. I was getting too much power. I had five acres. I was going to be. I was going to build a uh, Liberty Village, inexpensive teepees. I could buy them for five thousand bucks, rent them out for fifty bucks a night, put a uh, put a restaurant in, uh, and and build the whole village overnight. Overnight. Practically within within thirty days, I could recreate an Indian village but for under twenty thousand dollars. You're inviting people to be independent of the government, 
which means the government can't control them anymore, and they're concerned. This is where the fear comes in. They're afraid that when they begin to look at that realistically, it's like when we did the little red schoolhouses. When they begin to look at that realistically, they say, wait a minute, I can't be out there where they can see me as a separatist or as an individual because they're going to want to control me and I'm giving that up. That's the fear angle again. That's the fear angle again. Be afraid. Be very, very afraid. You need the government to take care of you. Well, I don't need the government to take care of me. I can exist. I can get. I can, I can get by anywhere. I uh, my my nickname when I was riding motorcycles was loner. <laughs> I bet you. But that's that's part of the problem with getting the transition made and. It, you know, it doesn't have to be exactly like you designed the Liberty Village. It's a concept. We need to get away from government control. And people don't like that is the oppression that this country is now under. That is exactly what I, I expanded on that theory since I lost my five acres. I, I said, look, we can do this. The whole Liberty Village concept, the concept, can be done in your neighborhood. Where did our neighborhoods come from? Uh, you got a, you had a house there in San Antonio. You're there in Austin. Where did those neighborhoods come from? What were they before they were a neighborhood? <laughs> really? <laughs> and you, you, you pick a place like Georgetown or San Marcos, they were nothing but a village before they started a college and then the town grew up for the college. Many of them were self-sufficient family farms. Richard Kelly Hoskins referred to the self-sufficient family farm as the basis of every civilization. How's that for history? Amen. And, and, and I said, our, our liberty... Back to the banker again, my friend, because if you do not owe anybody anything, and you can come up with a way of getting your own uh, energy, fuel, whatever, uh, and you can provide your, most of your own food. It doesn't have to be all of it, but most of your own food. Not only will you be self-sufficient and not oppressed, but you will be healthier because of the process that most of the food out there at the stores is going through. That's right, and uh, I, I've got to, uh, hang on. That mainstream media won't tell you. At Truth Radio, you can listen live or listen to the live selection of archived programs. Truthradio.com, the truth is out there. And I've been broadcasting on that for about 20 years, still doing it, folks. I've been here for the long run. <laughs> but let's, let, let's just take, take this and listen to this. If you, uh, you've got a neighborhood here, all it would take, folks, is for you to start talking to your neighbors. Now, I'm guilty of this. I lived in Miami for eight years. I think I knew two people in my neighborhood. I never went over. I never knocked on anybody's door. I never invited anybody over to me. Somebody told me, uh, well, Clay, you're a hermit. I go, what do you mean a hermit, man? I talk to hundreds of people every week. What do you mean I'm a hermit? Have you ever gone over to anybody's house? <laughs> Well, no. <laughs> Welcome to current society. But uh, if you grow food in your backyard instead of crabgrass, if you <laughs> if you put solar and wind on your roof, you're basically taking a step back in history. I remember crossing this country, and this is uh, this is before I was born. We crossed this country and set up homes, dug a well, and put a windmill up, and we lived pretty comfortably in those isolated little homes. The towns, we simply built the town so we had a place to meet, go into town, and the merchants came in. But what if we took one block, just one block, Jake? and helped everybody that lived on that block set up solar on their roof 
a windmill in their backyard, a garden in their backyard, and we grew our own food and provided our uh, God provided the energy that we needed to light up some lights to power this computer and I've got up on my website I've got uh, uh, a link to a gentleman I had on my show he built something called uh, the juice box and that's a, a little box that would fit on the back of my Harley that would charge up the computer, that would charge up uh, there's a little modem I, I uh, got in my hand here, it's about two inches square and uh, it yeah, picks up that thing. That looks pretty good. it picks up satellite and it's called clear so I could take that juice box and go out to, up to Sturgis, go down to Daytona, sit out on the beach put a little uh, sunscreen up, sunshade up, little tent uh, like device that you see on the beach all the time keep the sun off of you put that juice box or put the solar panels that unfold and uh, put that on the uh, top of the uh, thing to help hold it down and do my whole show turn on the lights when it got dark and hook up to the modem, charge the computer, charge the cell phone what do I need the government for? Well, but now, wait a minute, Mr. Douglas, you're telling me that I can't sit and have my beer and watch Here Comes the Night and Judge Judy? Yeah, something like How that. How am I going to get my I, information? I, 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 Where am I going to get my new information from? Turn on your computer. <laughs> 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 Just listen to this show. And I, I, somebody just came out with a, with a, a, an article suggesting what I suggested over uh, 20 years ago. Load your weapon, clean it, load it, and shoot the TV. Shoot the TV. You'd be a lot better off. Yeah, be a lot better off. I mean, they don't call it programming for nothing. But if you take your neighborhood and you put solar on the roof of every home, you put a garden in the backyard of every home, you join a co-op like the Oklahoma Food Co-op. They're putting the farmers together with the folks in the city. And... Uh, then you don't you don't need the banks you don't need the government you don't need the media you can starve them to death just like they want to starve you with this genetically modified food now Amen. on a commercial basis and this is uh, again all of this is in the next issue the May issue of the Free American I'm just putting the finishing touches on it now getting all the uh, photos sized and all that and one of these stories I've got is about an organization called Bright Farms. And they are doing something that's awfully unique. They are, right now, most, where does our food come from? Where does the food in your supermarket come from, Jake? Mexico? Well, the, uh, the problem is, even, even if it comes from down the road, I know, because I'm in a farm area, that a lot of this stuff, when it, but on the way to the shelf in the grocery store, goes through processing. Uh, uh, for instance, even if the material in the boxes is put in there without adding anything, without any, anything but toasting, you radiate the, the box on a conveyor belt. It, it's all juiced with some kind of uh, processing, and that alone alters its uh, nutrition value for us. And it, that, that's true with a lot of the stuff we get, uh, even though it may be fresh when it hits there, the processing. Um, and then, what about, I can get some certain here and watched people all around me put chemical, liquid chemicals on their pastures. Uh, one of it was to kill and the other thing supposedly to fertilize. And 
I'm sitting here looking out my window at my two horses and about 20 goats, and they're knee deep in grass of various kinds, and I don't trip the soil up, I don't plow it, I don't uh, disc it, I didn't put any fertilizer on it. Uh, we need some rain, but they're all knee deep in grass in absolutely a perfect shape and form. And all the guys around me have sick, uh, thin, or ugly looking animals and are complaining that they have to keep giving them shots and uh, warming them and all of that. I don't do that. And, and again, what happened to those things that are put in the grass, uh, shot into the animal, wiped on the animal, whatever, uh, when it gets into the meat? Or same thing with crops. They, they put an herbicide on the crop they want to harvest, for instance, corn, to kill everything except the corn cob itself, and then their little uh, automatic uh harvester can go through there and put that up and all other stuff goes out on ground and does what to the next crop so you know we, we keep poisoning ourselves through all this processing and i'm back to your original premise if we and i think god's got us where we can adapt as we go along to some degree but i'm healthy because i stay away from what might be in this process the best I guess I don't want to be poisoned, and here I am at 72, healthy as a horse. Yep, not far behind you. And uh, I think I'm about 67 now. But uh, the again, American ingenuity is at work, and the answers are here. In, uh, on May 17th, Bright Forms announced a partnership with J&J &J Distributing, which supplies wholesale fruits and vegetables to retailers throughout the Twin Cities. Bright Farms will build a 38,000 square foot greenhouse in uh, D.C. Department of General Services, acting on the behalf of Mayor Vincent C. Gray, announced a partnership to build a hundred thousand square foot greenhouse farm. You know where they're putting these farms? On August 20th, 2012, Bright Farms Incorporated and Schnook Markets announced a partnership to build a greenhouse for the 99 store St. Louis based market supermarket chain. Now what they're doing they're building these greenhouses on top of the supermarket change the supermarkets so you'll be able to get pest pesticide free vegetables the day they're picked from the supermarkets and I'm all for that in fact to the point that I just built a uh, a uh, 144 square foot greenhouse myself and my wife has planted what's called heritage seeds in it that haven't been through any of the processing. They are from a good ways back and have never been in the processing thing. So we're actually growing vegetables right now. They're, they're coming up and they're in a greenhouse up. So yeah, I, I, again, I'm not beholding to somebody outside of my group for, for, for the, uh, they say in this article that's in this next issue of the Free American, the business has changed in the last 30 years. Small family-owned operations have been replaced by bigger operations servicing change. It's not a cheap enterprise. It's big business, and growers more than ever have to watch your bottom line. I mean, this is, this is a good takeover of the whole corporate thing. By doing Amen. something that's good for people, I mean, and and yes, it should be, uh, it should be. Uh, doesn't mean we're we're be holding them to. I mean, this is just, this is this is a way to keep people employed, and uh, we and eliminate the need for gasoline. 
you need to, right now to ship the, the, the food in from the farms, whether they're in Mexico or whether they're, uh, you know, in uh, in Mississippi, wherever, you have to use gasoline by by concentrating on these cities and rebuilding our cities and rebuilding our counties. I think this is a this is a, you you get behind your county sheriff, you sit down in the county, and you say, hey, look, here's what they're doing in Kansas City. They've uh, they've uh, Kansas City announced a partnership. The Port Authority of Kansas City and Bright Farms announced a partnership to build a 100,000 square foot greenhouse farm in Kansas City, Missouri. Amen. You working and with your county? We're not. We're not the rebels here. We're not going. We're not going down without a fight. You know, we're not the rebels here. I. I. You know, I. I. Oh. I we're. We are the defenders. I took an oath to defend the Constitution. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Right now, we got more domestic enemies than we do uh, foreign enemies, and and that's uh, I'll touch on that because the the media is trying to demonize and uh, trying to create another cold war with Russia over Crimea or over uh, the Ukraine, and I think the the Russians. After they lost 60 million of their citizens to the communists, that uh, they kind of woke up and they said, "Hey, we ain't going to do this no more." And that I might be happening time with time the Chinese time. too. Go ahead, sir. I, I think I'll back to coming. Uh, Rudy and I talked about revival, and we've both seen it. It's not going to be as widespread as we like, but. There's, there were 480 pastors that attended the last uh, Texas Restoration meeting, and uh, I think it was Austin. There were 900 people there, and nearly half of them were pastors. I'm not saying they were all called of God, but at least they visited the right thing. And it's an indication of what you said about uh, the, the supermarket thing, the growing the greenhouse thing, and uh, the, the idea of the, the uh, ind individual or more localized community, which is the concept of Liberty Village, I think you and I probably, and I told you this, uh, we have to be patient. We have to realize that we're in God's plan, and as long as we are, we're like uh, Jacob and uh, Caleb, who watched their whole generation, they left Egypt die in the desert to put their kids and let them into the promise land. I think that's where we who are leaders now of what you might call a movement, uh, I think that's where we are. We have to be patient. We have to be ready to act. I think with that. Uh, I think we're going yeah. Repeat that, Jake. You pretty uh, just uh, do me a favor. Do me a favor and repeat that because uh, you broke up there. Internet, internet's a little squirrely right, today. Our, our hope is that there will be a revival. That there will be restoration. I, I think the flames of that are beginning to be seen. Again, if you did this, but I was saying, you know, your Liberty Village concept, the idea. Of the green house section, uh, the uh, uh, wise community coming back life. Uh, specifically, uh, the farm area first because it, it is a food production area and it gets us away from government. Uh, the cities are going to follow. Hitler was as bad as uh, Berlin did after the Second World War. Uh, these are war zones. What's a war zone? Uh, because, and there are other places, I think, is also one of them that are literally, are, uh, they look like they're almost abandoned, and there's areas that are, you know, they may have people who are meeting with drugs or having a few wars there or something, but there's no no community 
you know, other than gangs. And uh, it's, if you get pictures of Detroit, it's it, it looks like Berlin. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, if you just uh, if you want to entertain yourself, check out some pictures of Nagasaki and compare them with Detroit and see uh, see who's better off. <laughs> <laughs> and, and listen, I hate to do this, but I've got a class in 40 minutes. That's all right, sir. That's all right. Uh, I, I've got... Uh, I can do five more easily, so get what you want to have. <laughs> yeah, well, let's, uh, let's uh, use, uh, use whatever time you got left to tell people how they can get involved with the... Uh, Timothy Bible College and the Little Red Schoolhouse, because this is so important. I mean, you want your kids in Sandy Hook, you want your kids in Columbine, you want to watch your children be massacred like they were at Waco or in the federal building. I, uh, so, I, I'd like for you to talk about that and tell people how they can get you. and the house. It's a a way to uh, take it home and put it on a computer. If your kids uh, over five or six years old, they can do one of these with a CD on a computer, and uh, we can do Skype classes. Uh, we have actually for local kids around here, they come to us. That's what I got now. And, in about 40 minutes, I've got a class, a physical class here. And the problem is that you back um, people, you're a little long at home. So yeah, it's back to the concept that you get a bunch of these people together that want to get out of the public indoctrination system and do this and you can do that in fact we've written a a uh, guideline or a, we've got a cd which will set up your little group <coughs> so he is going to be like the daycare uh, adult for your group while they do what folks they're going to sit on the computer or and let you do you know, the your group, one for the next group, and so forth. And it took a hundred hours for the kid to graduate. Twelve years, and most people say, "Oh, well, how can that be?" Well, I'm not asking them to do four hundred dates or spend a whole year on somebody. These things are precisely done and understandable in the them outdoors where they're going to build a house or something or put a glass of water and see how it goes through the street. These things are practical and they are inspiration for life. And you're part of our board, but <clears throat> you know that this is able, something that they, they're able to do at home without some uh, regimented approach. They can be children or even people. I, we got 50 year olds taking the head high school graduation course because they want the diploma. So, uh, and if you get into the uh, college realm, we've got the same thing going on there. <coughs> the, some of the college courses like the farm and ranch course require some outdoor work and some physical things, but uh, as do the pastor courses. But, um, they're, they're way less expensive than a college or university somewhere else. Um, they're designed not to encumber you for life <clears throat> because you want a little education. They are designed to, you know, cover our costs and get you ready to go out and actually exist uh, successfully. Uh, that's as about a capsule as I can make it, brother. Uh, Douglas, I guess I could give the address is P.O. Box 33278, 
Fashion Field Fixes, uh, 78265, or they can call us at 512-398-3811. And we may not be here all the time because we're, we start at 6 a.m. and quit at about 3. <clears throat> so if you call after that, you're going to get a recording. But you can sign up for $25 on the website, www.timothybiblecollege.org. Or actually, we have it on .info also. There's two different websites. Both of them are Timothy Bible College, one's .org. One info, and you on application and through PayPal. Uh, I think much you do that too. But uh, yeah, sure. And by the way, if you want, if if you didn't get all that written down, folks, just go to freeamerican.com. And uh, Timothy Bible College is the, the top left of uh, my website. Now I've had people being criticizing my website. Too much information. You got 40 pages worth of information on the first page. You ought to change that. Well, sorry, dig through it. And uh, to the top, we've got the last issue of the Free American. The May issue will be up there probably before the weekend. And uh, I need a copy of that for our school, by the way. Sure, no problem. We're still we're still teaching about the Free American. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got the uh, the the first eleven issues are up for free up on the website. All you got to do is click on the uh, click on the picture of the cover and you can you can read the first 11 issues. And, oh wow, okay. And the uh, for the next uh, three, the April uh, uh, March, April and May issue, they're $2.99 to everyone else out there and you can All you got to do is click on the one of the donation buttons and do a reoccurring donation of two dollars and ninety nine cents, and I'll send it to you every month. Let me add one thing, and then I got to go. Okay. If you're listening to this Clay Douglas program, let me tell you something to tell everybody, and especially those that want to throw rocks at you. If you're willing to go out there and or be a champion for our cause and be a Christian patriot and do it the best you know how, then shut up and let him do it. Uh, this guy is doing something that I don't care to do. I'm not very good at it. He's a little weird. I guess that goes with territory because every guy that I know, and I know a bunch of them, that has a radio or a TV He does that. He still goes and sleeps at night. So if you're going to throw rocks, throw rocks at the enemy. Hold them for the enemy. This guy's not the enemy. I'm not the enemy. Uh, I can give you a whole list. We have to come together be part of the revival or restoration of our people. This is it. It's the time, and we need to do it now. That's it. I uh, I appreciate that, Jake. And I, uh, you know, I I have uh, I I've been doing this for quite some time, and uh, the there's a ton of information on the website. It may be too much. Maybe uh, you could do it better if you uh, if you can. You know. Hey, come on, man! You're gonna help me do it. I I'm looking for people to work with, and okay, I'll talk to you later. Thank you, Doctor no, Jake no, Wade. No, let me let me say one other thing. Okay, and this is on your behalf because I know you have this exact attitude. I'm going to do this, and if you want to help me pull the wagon. Please come and help pull the wagon because the food is heavy. If you want to just ride along, jump in the wagon, but get out of the way because we'll run over you. If you don't want to help, shut up and get out of the way. All right. Tell That's that. Uh, tell that to the uh, folks at the at the Truth Seekers meeting there in Austin. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> you got to play. You have a good day. All right, sir. Thank you very much. All right. 
Now, let's see what we can do here. Let's see if we can do this. The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. Let us never tolerate outrageous conspiracy theories. Conspiracy theories. Because it is not the government of the people any longer. Circus ridiculous. A new world order. A world where the rule of law governs the conduct of nations. Most people do not understand the Illuminati. It's all about control. Conspiracy, Conspiracy theories. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a type of nip, highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. A new world order. Its preparations are concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised. 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 It's the weekend resilience in show. Well, hello, listeners, and welcome to the Weekend Vigilante Show. I'm your host, Sheila Zelensky, for April 24, 2014. Today, folks, we have a very powerful, hard-hitting lineup. I want to introduce Dr. Garrow. I mean, this absolutely is one of the most sought-after guests. I think of any person I've ever talked to, this man has his thumb on the pulse of what's going on the CIA. Someone I just had on, too. Being knee-deep in staggering intel. He's a well-respected activist who spent much of his life rescuing infant girls from China. These are babies who would be killed under their, their country's one child policy. He was nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize for his work. Dr. Jim Garrow, welcome to the program, sir. Thank you, Sheila. Every time somebody introduces me the way you have, you know, I, I kind of sit back and go, man, who is this guy? <laughs> well, Jim, you were really instrumental in exposing the Obama litmus test determining who will stay and who must go in his military leaders and we'll get into that bombshell later but there's so many things to talk about today we're going to get into the missing malaysian airliner the coming world war the existence of a possible military coup against obama the crisis in ukraine brewing increased isolation of america from our allies a communist takeover unfolding before our eyes and much much more so it might seem like a, a funny place to start jim but we're seeing an all-out war on America on all fronts here. I mean, the plundering and pillaging. I mean, I can only really use pirate terms here of the last bastion of hope, freedom, and liberty. It's, America has always really been that strong moral compass, you know. It's once stood as the beacon standing firm for a democratic constitutional republic like none in the world, and there's, there's not a country like it. You know, and really, Jim, it wasn't the last free country in the world. It was the first and only a Christian nation with deep roots in biblical principles, yet we've absolutely lost our way. I mean, somewhere along the line here, we've lost our ability to be that moral compass to the rest of the world. And we've really allowed ourselves to be taken over from the inside by a group of sociopathic, unscrupulous charlatans who are hell-bent on destroying every aspect of this country we're, we're in serious deep trouble aren't we here jim uh, we are we are and you, you took every word uh, that i was going to use you you used it so uh, well done uh, but you know let, let me redefine a few things because there's some things we need to celebrate that have been turned by the left against us and yet in the rest of the world they look at us and they define us using these terms you remember how they referred to George W. Bush as a cowboy? Remember that? And they used it as if, as if it was derogatory. But let me tell you, the rest of the world is watching our Westerns. Believe it or not, that is how they discovered who we really are. And think about who we really are. According to the Westerns, the sheriff is the lone guy who stands, knowing he could possibly die, he stands for right and between the bad guys and the good guys, and he stands alone often. But you know, they know this about that American sheriff, about that cowboy, the good, the good guy with the gun, that he will ultimately pull it and shoot the bad guy dead, because he knows the difference between right and wrong. That is what's celebrated around the world about America. We used to know what right was from wrong, and we would stand up against all odds 
for what was right. And we were known for that. We were thought of as cowboys. We were celebrated as cowboys. Not the left's version of cowboy, which is craziness, but what the real cowboy's about, standing for goodness, simplicity often, but standing between good and evil, and, and being the last bastion of hope for the good citizens who look to the cowboy, look to the sheriff as the guy who would give up his life for them. Well, I don't know if it's our GMO food or the fluoridation or the big pharma runoff, like I was saying to Gerald, the Kim Charles, but I mean, we do have a dumbed down public. And, you know, what's sadder to me is we've got 80% of so called Christians walking around in a complete dystopic trance, shrugging their shoulders, singing Kumbaya while Rome burns around us here. We've got the mega churches, the pukes in the pulpit. I mean, these telepickpocketists. I mean, it's just, you know, we're just acquiescing to the establishment and we're being systematically taught to love our servitude here while they usurp all our freedoms. And it's always safety over freedom. We hear that from the talking heads. This is full spectrum dominance over every single area of our lives. I mean, you look at everywhere body scanners, the citizen spies, the sound cannons, the drones, the stage terror. You know, there's a camera on every street corner. It's Big Brother meets Draconian Police State and it's an extirpated constitution, but an all-out more fervent war on Christianity, because you're not allowed to say Jesus anymore, but it's fine if you want to uh, praise Allah. I mean, this is just a complete soft kill calling, but I mean, it's only the beginning of the New World Order's hellish eugenics plan, isn't it, Jim? It is, absolutely. And, and you know, we invited Satan and demons into our classrooms. We invited them to take over our children's education. Yeah, it's called Common Core. <laughs> Once we did that, we invited everything under the sun that was evil in to deal with our children. And as a result, what has happened? We've lost our children. We are losing our children. Um, unless we take them out of the public school system, unless we take them out of the indoctrination centers to become Marxists, we are in danger of losing our children. Of course, Lenin and Stalin knew that. Give us the children, and within a generation, we'll have the nation. They knew that. That's right. They did say that. You give me the child, I'll give you the adult. That's right. Isn't that something, hey? Well, let's get in some headlines here. Like, I mean, this is just a bad episode of a Twilight Zone movie here. Remember the TV show Fantasy Island? The plane, the plane. Let's get into the plane, Jim. Isn't it interesting, all the smoke and mirrors, the diversion? These 20 passengers on board this Malaysian Airlines flight MH370, when they're all senior staff for that U.S. technology company, Free scale semiconductor. They had just launched this highly advanced electronic warfare microcontroller for military radar systems in the days before that Boeing 777 went missing. I mean, planes don't go missing here, as you well know, Jim. I mean, Freescale shareholders include the Carlyle Group of private equity investors whose past advisors have included Bush, ex-U.S. president, of course, and former British prime minister. I mean, a story also going viral on the internet pins the Illuminati Rothschild as exploiting airlines to gain full patent rights to this incredible KLO3 microchip. What's your take on this plane scenario, Jim? Well, the microchip itself, that's uh, disinformation. That is meant to have us look the wrong way. The technology breakthrough that was important, and they tried to steal it, thus, you know, the diversion of the aircraft to Diego Garcia so they could offload these guys, the high-tech geeks, but also the equipment that they stole because there was a joint venture going on between China and America and through this company. And what they were able to do is, in, in terms of physics and, and use of computers, advanced computers, was that they were able to actually make light penetrate through a solid and come out the other side. Now, I'm not sure the depth to which they did it, but that is amazing and that is a major breakthrough. And immediately people go to, ooh, does this mean a cloaking device? Well, we're really talking about a quantum leap in physics, too. Absolutely. This is, this is major. This is uh, like the discovery of the DNA. This is ma such a major breakthrough. The implications are unbelievable uh, in terms of the military. But now, here, here we have this jet sent right back over to Diego Garcia, so the CIA center, the operations center there, can take charge of these people and debrief them. Well, interrogate them and torture them, obviously. But that was such necessary equipment that uh, I'm amazed that they were even managed to get it onto an airplane and get out of uh, out of the hands of, of their handlers. I'm not sure how it was how that part of it uh, played out, but uh, certainly they escaped. They attempted to steal the stuff, 
take it back to China, and uh, we would have been in deep doo-doo, uh, you know, if all of this stuff had gone its way over to China, and they had this huge military advantage, you know, the beginnings of it, but uh, the breakthrough science was in their in their hands. Of course, they sent the jet fighters to turn it around. It turned around. It landed. They were offloaded. It was sent on its way to Pakistan. That's the last I heard of it was in Pakistan. Tom McInerney, Major uh, General. Right. Uh, Tom McInerney, he, uh, he verified that. Isn't that incredible? Wow. And yet the, the talking heads will just tell us some spin-doctored story. I'm sure. I mean, there's absolutely no integrity with these spin-doctoring lamestream media hucksters, is there? Oh, none at all. And, of course, they can rely on Right Wing Watch to talk about Sheila and Jim Bob. And, uh, in fact, we're off our rockers. Well, we're, we're conspiracy theorists, of course. You know, we're tinfoil hat-wearing kooks, aren't we? Yeah, the only problem is we have people who are on the ground in Diego Garcia who said, yeah, that's exactly what happened. Yes, I'm the guy who put the food on the plane. It was reprovisioned. The toilets were emptied. It was refueled, and it was sent on its way, minus those 20. That's just incredible, too. And again, maybe the talking heads will never really come out. And, and of course, there'll be no accountability for the depth, I'm sure of that, too. What's going on in Ukraine here, Jim? I mean, Putin seems to want a resurgence of the former Soviet Union here. He went into the area of confluence. You know, I remember headlines not long ago, China and Russia ink a new energy deal. Russia issued a blunt warning yesterday that it would respond thoughts of the United States sending any troops in. I mean, pro-Kremlin rebels in the East, I mean, it, it's just, it's unbelievable. I mean, around the world we're really seeing things develop because of the impact of megalomaniac Marxist bowing down to his Muslim Brotherhood, Barry Satoro. I think they're critical elements. When you see the full package of what's going on here, Jim, when Putin moved into Crimea and after the clear signal, and thankfully you were the one that mentioned the media was able to capture when Obama passed that message on to Putin that he'd have more flexibility. I mean, talk about conspiring with the enemy. This is just treasonous. It puts Europe under the control of Russia. I mean, lifeblood is the energy. And thank goodness NATO kicked him out. But and there's a heavy presence of Russia in Latin America building bases, etc. I mean, what's going on with all this, Jim? Well, obviously, let's, let's, there's a lot here. I mean, you just opened up a, a whole new onion. Um, Putin has moved in. He's, uh, he's craftily looking to rebuild the Soviet empire again. Uh, and he knows the only way he's going to be able to do it is by taking control of Europe uh, through the stranglehold of gas. And that's it. It's natural gas. That's what he went for. That's why he went to the Crimea. That's why he went to the region he did. He is now in charge of the gas that Europe depends on uh, through the winter, uh, also for cooking, by the way. And uh, so now he's in charge of that. Here's where we stumbled, of course, let's, let's realize. Deliberately, Mr. Obama knew full well exactly what he should have done, what he could have done to stymie, to checkmate the move of Putin and make America a leader and a savior, as it were, uh, to Europe. All he needed to do was get the gas company presidents together in the White House in the Oval Office, sit them down and say, okay, let's start shipping over in those massive tankers, uh, liquefied uh, natural gas to Europe, uh, go into the following, which ports should we go into, uh, and let's undersell Putin's gas, and uh, we can rescue Europe out of the stranglehold. An easy thing to do. He didn't do it deliberately. But he's also potentially got a stranglehold on our NATO allies. Do you think that's correct? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. But, you know, the whole thing could have been undone uh, and stymied. Putin's moves could have been stopped and stymied if Obama had made the right moves. But he didn't. He didn't quite deliberately. He is giving Europe, in the end, he's giving Europe to Putin. Has he ever not dropped the ball with something, though? I mean, I, his, look at Obamacare. I mean, every single thing this guy touches, it's the opposite of King Midas. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, it, and it's not a tragedy. It, it's a deliberate uh, deceit uh, on his part. And, and that's that's the, uh, the the wonderful thing. Remember that movie, uh, The Usual Suspects? Yeah. Uh, and the bad guy, the, the crippled dude, uh, he said that the smartest thing that Satan ever did was convince everyone that he didn't exist. He didn't exist. exist. You betcha. Yeah. You have Obama. I mean, you've talked a lot about Obama on different programs. <laughs> where do you start? I mean, the identity, where do you start with this? I just saw a clip where he's on MSNBC and he said, you know, 
I, I'd really like to talk about my Muslim faith. And he goes, I mean my Christian faith. I don't know. Papadopoulos if, actually did that for him. He, he corrected him. He used the deceptive term, but my Christian faith, after uh, he slipped and used the reality term. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it just never ends with unscrupulous charlatans that are spinning, you know, whether it's him attending Columbia, whether it's, you know, he's a forgery, a fraud. He was born in Kenya. This Marxist megalomania, this guy is a known communist. I mean, look at Frank Miles Davis. I want you to really get into, you know, this with my audience here. Yeah. Well, obviously, you're right. He was born in Kenya. This whole thing was a deception to, uh, to plant him. Uh, what has happened is that the Muslim forces behind oil, uh, the Saudis, uh, have funded this guy at every turn. So uh, Colombia gives him a degree, actually Occidental, too. They benefited uh, because he never passed properly out of his courses. He didn't have enough to get into, enough credits to get into Colombia, let alone, uh, you know, then succeed. Never went to any classes. Of course, you're talking to uh, Wayne Allen Root. You ever talk to him? Uh, you'll find that, uh, you know, he was his classmate. One of only two blacks. You think he wouldn't stand out? <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, so here he is. I mean, nobody knew him. No one ever saw him. Uh, nobody could say, I sat next to him in class. And, of course, wouldn't that be one of the bragging points down the road? Hey, did you know that I sat ne in economics? I sat next to the future president. And you know what? We used to talk and have beer together. Yeah, yeah. none. Nobody. Nada. No, never it's happened. just a sure thing. Yeah. yeah, exactly right. So Wayne Allen Root can say with authority, look, I went there. I was the valedictorian. I knew everybody, and he did. But I never saw, never heard from or of Barry Satoro until afterwards. Then all of a sudden... People are claiming that he was there, but he never saw him. What Pelosi did there with the way they worded his, I mean, she didn't want to be getting charges on a fraud either, right? They worded that very cleverly, didn't they? They did. Instead of her being charged with uttering a forged document, instead all she did was change the wording of what had been historically the paper that represented the fact that the person that the Democratic Party or the Republican Party were putting forward as the candidate for President of the United States, they declared that the person met the qualifications for the office of President and was the candidate of the party. They changed that. They changed it to read that he was the candidate of the party. Nothing to do with qualifications. And yet, Obamacare is, you know, they're trying to repackage that just last week as a, I mean, we've had this big kerfuffle, the big flop trying to return that out. I mean, it's unbelievable. These hostages never stop, do they? They don't stop, but one thing they do uh, continuously, constantly, and dependably is make sure that the money flows into the coffers of their buddies so that per percentage of, of it uh, and jobs and, and impact and, and promises are made and met by the very people who are getting the money. It's all about money. It's all about power. It's all about access. And that's what they're very good at. The Dems are very good at providing uh, for these people. But you know what? Even the people who are getting the money could not believe the amount, the windfall that they were in for once the tap was turned on. Well, he really is a puppet, isn't he, though? I mean, the bottom line here is he's just a globalist minion, and he's a yes man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's, I mean, he is. He's the puppet. He's controlled. He's told what to do, what to say. Uh, he is not the brain behind everything, but you can be sure of one thing. George Soros is there with his sticky little fingers at every turn. You look at he did with the yen. You, he seems to have his fingers in every single thing, doesn't he, at some but, point? Yeah, and ultimately he will bring down the American dollar. And he made billions and billions, hundreds of billions of dollars by taking, taking down two other economies and, and the currency of, of these two economies. And, of course, America's next, and it's the biggest prize. Well, were you surprised? I want to jump into another headline. Of course, we've heard nothing, but again, it's being spin doctored. What did you think of this Clive and Bundy showdown at the Nevada cattle ranch with the BLM minions? Well, there is a total miscalculation. One of the one of the times where they were caught unprepared for a reaction. They did not ever in a million years think that America, regular Joe Six Pack, would stand up with guns and say, no way, this is a breach of the Constitution, this is against the rule of law, you can't get away with this, you can't run roughshod over this one guy. And people stood behind Clive and Bundy. Hey, look, he's not perfect, he's made some stupid statements, but hey, 
the point is, once again, they'll try to deflect everything into the stupid statements. Sure. Yeah. And people will pull away from them uh, embarrassedly because he said something about uh, blacks and uh, or used another word actually, didn't he? The point. Yeah. The point is that he stood properly and rightly against a government which was overstepping its constitutional authority. And uh, it, this is long standing, 20 years, 20 years of trying to pay the right amount of money. They're refusing to take the right amount of money because he won't sign away his rights. And that's what it boils down to. Did he not pay? You're right, he didn't pay. Why didn't he pay? He didn't pay because the paper that he had to sign once he paid took away his civil rights. The guy was not a fool. Absolutely. Well, and you know, I mean, let's face it, they homesteaded that area. They're, the generations of their family goes back to 1860s. I mean, talk about flashpoints. And, you know, to the discerning eye, Jim, they're everywhere. And I think, you know, look at the tyranny and, you know, threatening to push the nation into open revolt. When you have these snipers up on these nests saying we're going to use lethal force, I mean, what happened at that Run is a visceral example of this growing discontent over an expanding federal government, and it's a perfect storm il illustration to me of an arbitrary and incompetent federal government, like you just said, running roughshod over its citizens. And these abuses have occurred for many decades, but it's this steady erosion of our personal wealth, our liberty, these usurpations continue, and I think Americans will face a choice between submitting or standing firm like the Bundy family did, because think of the Lexington Minuteman, and I think of the colonists, did what they had to do, but what's your sense about what's really playing out here, though, Jim? When it, are they threatening to push the nation into open revolt? Well, it's a test. This was a test. Uh, they had no clue that it would be what it is, uh, that it would, would be instrumental in uh, awakening the rest of the population. People are waking up to the fact that, you know what, the, the people out there, you know the conspiracy theorist people? Do you know they're right? It's Look what he's doing. So they are seeing now a glaring example of what everyone's been saying, or on our side of the argument, uh, have been saying about Obama, that he really is, and he wants to be an enlightened despot, an oligarch. He will, in fact, though, be a tyrant, and that's what he's proving at every turn. It's his way or the highway. doesn't matter what the law says doesn't matter what tradition has been in place, doesn't matter agreements, they don't matter. It doesn't matter that you, if you stand up and say, I will not sign my rights away, uh, he'll run right over you. What does it take to get this guy impeached? I mean, forget NDAA and all these nightmares, the Patriot Act, and forget all this other hellish legislation. Obamacare, forget it. Benghazi, Fast and Furious. I mean, what does it take to, to impeach this guy? I mean, Bill Clinton got impeached for... And in, in this, you know, he, he's Nazis on steroids here. I don't understand what it takes to get this guy removed. Well, it's going to take a sheriff who serves papers on him, charging him uh, with treason. That's what it's going to take. It's going to take some brave dude to walk in there with the authority that a marshal, a U.S. marshal yeah. has, yeah. Uh, and the only person that has that authority, uh, who can go in, serve him, charge him, arrest him, now, that's going to be interesting to see what happens there. Let me jump back into something. You, you mentioned something very important. You talked about the snipers. Are you aware that not only the snipers who were on the side of the government, namely the, the people who get paid to do war, you get these paid mercenaries. These guys with the sniper rifles were. But it turns out that a group of other snipers went up, disarmed those snipers, took their guns away, had them taken away, and sat in the positions that previously were occupied by government forces, uh, namely those people who were paid to do war, and patriots were there to protect Mr. Bundy. You realize that that's why they stood down? They yeah, were it was out wonderful to see sheriffs like these uh, constitutional sheriffs. Joe Arpaio, I believe, was out there, as well as Stuart Rhodes. Wonderful to see, wasn't it? It was, and you saw a bunch of Oath Keepers actually take charge of the situation and take out, uh, without violence, take out the snipers and replace them. And then when the word went back, when the word went back, you saw those people with guns, suddenly they were shrinking violets and they wanted out of there fast. 
Well, speaking of military, let's segue into what, of course, is on everybody's mind, this litmus test. I mean, again, in the beginning, I talked about you being really instrumental in exposing that bombshell. Tell people what this litmus test of leadership in the military is, essentially, and get into this for us, Jim. Okay, well, you know, this started back January 20th of 2013, when I received a phone call from a, a hero, a hero of America. You would know the name. Uh, everyone would know the name. This person phoned me and said, Jim, can you help me get the word out? I, he knew that I was kind of savvy on what was going on in the Internet. Can you help me get the word out? Here's what's happening to our people. I've got people phoning me who pledged themselves to the country, have worked their entire lives, and have gone up the ranks successfully, and uh, they're phoning me in a panic because they're being asked a question. They don't know what to do and they're being marshaled out, and that was the, the key. He hadn't used the word purge. That pur purge showed up the next week, by the way. But they were being asked a litmus test. The litmus test basically was, if you were ordered to confiscate the arms of civilians, and the civilians refused, you know, even talking about the Second Amendment right that they have to have and hold arms, and they refused this confiscation order. If you were ordered to fire on civilians, would you fire on them? That was the litmus test question. The people who said, yes, I would follow orders, they stayed. The people who said, no, that's against the Constitution and uh, posse comitatus. That is not within our right or our purview. When you look at really the guts of posse comitatus, I mean, essentially, that t you cannot. Not only are you bound to the oath of, you know, protecting enemies, domestic and foreign, but... You cannot fire on American citizens. These people cannot. How are these guys getting away with this? And what kind of American, a red-blooded American, would turn around and fire on his own citizens, though, really, Jim? Well, that's what they're counting on. And remember Nazi Germany. That's exactly what happened. Uh, very quickly, they uh, called out the ranks. They purged the ranks of anyone who would not go along uh, with the demands of the Nazi party at the time. Yeah, that makes sense, because look at the Pentagon sweeping they did right after about that timeline. They got rid of how many high-ranking generals and admirals, etc.? Yeah, over 200, actually, in the end. Uh, but that's what they were doing. They were testing the loyalty. Will you be loyal to the nation, or will you be loyal to the president? And that's what Obama's after. He wants absolute abeyance, loyalty, bend the knee to him as the new dictator of America. Well, and look at the nukes debacle back in October. I mean, we know a nuclear device went off in the deep ocean, and two other devices supposedly went missing off South Carolina. Putin came out and confirmed it. It's staggering how many protocols Obama breached there. And what's even more unbelievable, Jim, is the layers of protections and signing off of every single person in the chain of command and how many violations there were. And, of course, you got the lamestream media talking heads like CBS bringing out a story. Nukes in hands of terrorists could result in bomb coming to Charlotte Harbor. And that was just repeated, parroted in every other mainstream media. I mean, you find it interesting that they keep warning us of EMPs. I mean, tie all this in for us. Well, you know, they're using the tactics of Alinsky and Cloward and Piven. Uh, they overwhelm the systems. There's so many, like you say, there's so many incidents all across America, it's hard to keep track. But that's part of the overwhelming of the system. And if you hear enough people talking about EMPs, pretty soon you don't listen to it. EMP doesn't exist anymore. And, of course, this rescue, and this is really what it was, it was a rescue of America. It was a protective maneuver on the part of three guys, two generals, one admiral, who said no to these orders that were absolutely a breach of protocol. Obama expected that nukes would be moved, a holus bolus, uh, just throw aside all the rudiments uh, of protection and uh, uh, use them against the American people. And, and the timing, it was so obvious, October 7th and 8th. What was going on October 7th and 8th? That week, the switch of polarity of the sun, it happens every 11 years. Two cycles ago, New England lost all its electrical grid. I don't know if you remember this. And Quebec, the province of Quebec in Canada, uh, it was devastating. Yeah, yeah, I do remember that. Yeah, it took that. weeks, all because of, you know, they say solar flares. That's what they said back then. But what it was was the electromagnetic magnetic pulse from the flare. Obama was counting on coordinating the maneuver when the sun switched polarities that he would set off these nuclear devices, EMP-capable nuclear devices, in the upper atmosphere 
and there would be a contributing effect in physics called uh, the Compton effect, a multiplier, and it would have been the most devastating thing. Hardly anything would have survived. Anything electrical, computer-driven, um, any system that was plugged into a wall, transportation, food distribution, uh, it would have all gone down. There's a book people should read. It's called One Second After. Read oh, it. That's an excellent Weep. preparation book. It is that. All right. We're almost out of time. I'd like to invite you to go watch this whole thing, The Mother of All Conspiracies with Dr. Jim Garrow. You might check out the show I did with Dr. Jim Garrow a few days ago, and maybe then you can understand that I am on the cutting edge here. I do have the guests on that are giving you the correct information. I am, and the May issue of the Fear American is going to be very powerful because I'm going to name all of the Jews in our banking system and our government that uh, Obama has appointed. He's appointed more than Bill Clinton or anyone before him. And this is not a conspiracy theory. We have a religious group that basically their religion is uh, the same as the Masons. They worship Satan. We've talked about that on the show today. Not telling you, I just want to make you aware of this and make you aware that you should be supporting people like me that are talking about this, that are giving you this, because they don't want you to hear this. They don't want you to realize who your masters are. Again, take the Pharisee Saul who told you, be a good slave. Don't rebel against your masters. We've got a uh, we've got a situation here. Yeah, and God does have my back, Lisa. God does have my back. God has kept me alive when there's no way I sh should have been able to survive. That's what the ambulance driver told told the witnesses to my accident. And this guy's gone, man. Uh, nobody injured that badly could possibly live. Turns out I wasn't quite as injured as they wanted uh, everyone to believe to justify a three-quarter million dollar hospital bill. I do need donations. I do need some help. You can do that at clay at freeamerican.com on PayPal. You need to, uh, I, I need all of the help I can get. Got a motorcycle that needs repairing. Got a trailer that needs repairing. Need to move to another location need to get involved, need the uh, ability to move and go around and talk to people. We're it's out of time. What's really going on in the news that mainstream media won't tell you? Are you frustrated with your elected politicians? Get the news behind the news at truthradio.com. At Truth Radio, you can listen live or listen to a large selection of archived programs on demand. Listen when you want to. TruthRadio.com. The truth is out there. All you have to do is open your mind and listen.